What's up? What's up, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Planet Xbox Podcast, powered by Weapon Wheel Patreon. I am your host, Best Buy Kid Smooth, co-host, ILP, Gaming Attic, Lord Gaming Attic. How are you doing this evening? Doing pretty good, man. It's been a pretty crazy week, man. I feel like this is one of those weeks where it's like, it's hard to cover everything. Yeah, absolutely. I've had to like put videos into videos like today i made a video on the hell divers 2 thing which we can talk about yeah that. absolutely and i had to like put the the wukong being rated in it like which is funny i didn't put that in the title or anything that's probably uh an error on my end i probably should have done that with wukong being a oh, Wu- wukong or wuchang right. what wukong being rated for xbox oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah. okay um yeah there's, there's a couple of things happen um we have pearl abyss denying the you know playstation contract uh the uh exclu- the deal to ban the xbox version um uh, call of duty launches is right around the corner by the time this uh thing goes live uh it would be have launched we're going to talk about its impact on game pass and of course the everlasting uh xbox third party uh uh oasis um so let's get to it you've i you played a quiet place how's that game you're muted i think i haven't i haven't played it yet i was gonna play it today but i had some stuff that uh came up from i pushed it to saturday but okay. i did buy it i don't know if you saw it oh you bought it off for console yeah oh okay well yeah i'll install it then yeah i and i also what's i don't know if i'm I don't know if I could talk about that, but there is another game downloaded on your console. I'm not going to talk about it because I don't know if I can like actually like legally talk about it. Legally, I'm pretty sure legally. Um, wait, let me check. When's it? When's it come out? The the embargo is the 28th of October. Um, yes. The embargo is the 28th. Is it the game I'm looking forward to? I don't know. Uh, that's a that's okay i gotta check um there's a uh no never mind that's that'll be too early okay all right fair enough um i haven't played a single thing no that's a lie so i upgraded my pc i don't know if we recorded a podcast since then but i i've played wukong um black myth wukong which i've grown to like it i think it's a decent game I still don't think it's like game of the year, but it's decent. It has its perks. Uh, the, la- yeah, the last three games in my rotation was Black Myth Wukong, Starfield, Shattered Dreams, and uh, Metaphor Refantasio. Um, I haven't completed any of them. Don't know when I'm going to do that because Call of Duty launches tonight. Uh, the campaign, I'm pretty sure it's going to be superb. And the multiplayer, I already played the beta, so I know it, that's going to be fun. So I'm probably going to be playing that all weekend. Gaming season's back, baby. Um, so Wukong rated for Xbox. How soon before we see it uh, for our for us to buy? How soon you think this is uh, coming to uh, to our beloved Xbox console? Probably by the end of the year. By the end of the year. Probably get enough at the video game awards. I don't, I don't think it's worth it, but if they trying to do that, pull that whole bull crap that uh, Baldur's Gate three did. That's kind. That's kind of garbage. That is kind of garbage. I don't think it, their situation warrants such an announcement. Um. But uh, happy to see. I I didn't look too much into it because I thought it was maybe the original rating that it got before when it was actually coming to Xbox day and date. Remember, they didn't, they delayed, they pretty much re, <laughs> the, the, the situation with that was so weird. It's been announced as an Xbox, a, a multi plot game for so long up until the summer's game fest where they, you know, decide to pull the old switcheroo. But, um, I'm, I mean, I don't think I'd, I'd buy it on Xbox. I mean, I have, again, I have it on PC, um, I, my, I finally have a PC that I can enjoy it on. So I'm still, I'm, I'm, I'm telling this is going to sound crazy though, right? 
I'm one more. I think I'm I'm one GPU away from from being like, you know, abandoning consoles, one GPU. And I, now I won't say abandoning, but like comfortably say, hey, you know, I'm going to take a, a, a break from playing uh, uh, from designating all my time to Xbox. Um, and then I know we are a couple weeks uh, from uh, the PlayStation uh, thingy, um, which, you know, what's crazy is it's, we're about two weeks from that. And I, I, I don't have any hype going into usually you get so close to like a console lunch, um, a big console lunch. And um, there's like there's hype, there's anticipation. I have no hype for the PlayStation 5 Pro. I, I think it's going to be an awesome console, but I, I, I have no hype for it right now. Um, but, um, you know, Wukong, be nice to see it finally come uh, to Xbox. Um, again, if you if 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 you have no plans on, you know, buying it or playing that game on Xbox, you know, I won't be mad at you. I mean, uh, it is a decent game, but, you know, Xbox gamers are constantly getting like, you know, stifled, shafted. Um, but, you know the way that things are going with um you know xbox you know you you hope and you know for the most success possible but where things are you know different things are changing uh console gaming is different uh the tribalism is 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 different i don't there, there's nothing to really fanboy or, or fan out to there's no competition is dead there's no competition um, in console gaming anymore and um, there's just gaming and for all that you want to be a happy gamer a really happy gamer get a PC no one will make fun of you yeah. but uh, there was another thing that occurred so Crimson Desert this is this massive RPG that Pearl Abyss is doing. Uh, this game is inspired by the likes of, you know, Breath of the Wild, inspired by Assassin's Creed, uh, The Witcher, of course. They took all these, you know, quirks from, you know, big games, these Game of the Year nominees, these big, you know, Western, Western action RPGs that came out in the last five years. And they put together this game called Crimson Desert. It looks really good. Uh, and it looks so good that, you know, Sony apparently approached Pearl Abyss to offer one of them their elusive timed exclusive deals where, you know, they give them a bag and they don't release the game on Xbox for some unforeseen time. Uh, and they even said specifically no Xbox. Yeah. T Specifically, no Xbox and Pearl Abyss, to my surprise, rejected this offer. Your thoughts on that? That because this is the first time somebody actually comes out and say, hey, oh, yeah, they offered us a deal and they rejected. Like who rejects that? I mean, people like, you know, Square Enix is a big publisher. They will never reject something like that. You know, Wukong obviously, you know, took a uh, backhand jobbed and lied about it um they, clearly they didn't reject it many developers would not reject this and this is how you come out with that's why we get in situations where places have all these you know exclusives no one can say i know you said in the video you know microsoft should be doing the same thing but what are your thoughts on like like somebody's actually turning down playstation uh, marketing deal agreement or like that was a surprise to me I don't think it was really the Xbox portion that bothered them. Mm. I think it was the wanting them wanting uh, rights to the PC publishing mm. uh, because I think a game like that's probably going to have good legs on PC, mm -hmm. and they weren't trying to like be dictated on what they can and cannot do with it on the PC. Absolutely. Do I think it's going to sell on Xbox? Yeah, uh, but you know, let's be honest; it'll probably sell more on PC and uh, PlayStation. Mm. Uh, but you know. Here, there's a difference between having to put yourself in a situation like that because you can't self-publish and being able to self-publish and not having to do that. Yeah. And I think it was the latter. Yeah, I mean, self-publishing, if you know you got, like, 
if you know you got a hit on your hand, like some a potential, like for if you got a, a hit, you know what I mean, a surefire hit, and people are shopping your game, they want the game. You got publishers coming at you left and right for it. That's a good interest gauge. The best thing to possibly do is to self-publish because that's that's hundred percent profit. It's you you they maximize profits going that route. Obviously, the upfront money from a PlayStation and the Xbox is it, it looks good, obviously, but that long term into that that no percentage splits and stuff like that is a, a is a better deal for them. Obviously, they would control the PC release. They'll do your standard console release and whatnot. Um, that's always the best thing. But the thing is, it's a gamble because, you know, a lot of games fell, right? This is a big game, a big investment. Uh, they've been working on it for a while. Uh, it looks like a high budget game that they're you know putting together. And I think um, they're in a position where, you know, they're in a situation where if it does like what a Wukong does, and sell all those billions like that's that's life changing that uh that that's more than can ever ask if it if it does what they has the, the potential to do they would re- have rather done that themselves rather than get them getting like a little small bag from playstation up front or xbox up front and then you know it sells well or sells uh, moderately but they they've kind of you know exhorted or exhausted the funds uh, that they can and this is you know why Square Enix struggles they they do that all the time they you know don't get the most out of their uh their games that they release uh because they're they sign these stupid deals and I'm just proud of Pearl Abyss for being able to walk away from something like that uh to turn it down and and to go in the route of um self-publishing and being able to release this game on their own terms and how they want and for whichever well, he- platforms they want he did bring up the the percentages that you know you get in the uh, typical deal like that mm-hmm. uh in the typical like publishing or anything uh that related so uh you know i feel like that was part of it too maybe there was some kind of speculation that was saying uh you know even if you good on this we're going to take more of that 70 so maybe it was like 50 50 on top of you know the restrictions we don't know anything it's all speculation but you know, I, I think there was a variety of reasons why he was not feeling that. Yeah, could be. Um, but shout out to them. Crimson Desert, I think, comes out sometime in 2025. Um, looking forward to its release. Um, I believe it's a full blown. I, I, I know it's been shown at an Xbox event a couple times, if I'm not mistaken. It uh, looks good. But it does look really good. Uh, I got to watch some, uh, check out some gameplay on that. I think there's like an hour like gameplay uh demonstration uh going on um that you can find online for sure so okay what else do we got uh there there was a couple of things that uh that happened man um catch me up okay so one of the biggest things right that people used to like sort of to get at xbox i'm sorry uh, to get at xbox uh gamers uh they would say you know how when they do do digital foundry comparisons right with the xbox series s and people like oh a majority of xbox players are playing on this version right so therefore xbox has the worst version they that's how they would like dismiss the xbox uh series x uh but we learned uh that today the xbox series x is 51% of the total sales of Xbox Series consoles while Xbox Series S represents 49. So Series X has most, it's, it's n- damn near 50 50, but Series X does uh, edge it out. A lot of people thought it was like three to one Series S, and, and that's not the case. Um, what are your thoughts on this? Um, That is what a lot of people would try to tell us. They're like, you know, more people are buying the Series S version or the series x in general and i think a lot of people are just trying to say that because it's cheaper and sometimes the cheaper thing makes sense but not for this particular thing do i think that like i think if anything this showed that physical isn't completely out of the picture like a lot of people Mm -hmm. uh, you know gave the perception of 
I think there are still a lot of people that would love, uh, you know, a physical media. And if anything, it showed that, you know, you could still do physical media. And as far as, like, the Series S thing, I think it's good. You know, it, it gives, like, a lot of, you know, what's what I'm looking for? Perception of what's going on in the industry. That, you know, I kind of want to know why. Because there's a digital version of the PlayStation 5. And is it is the reason that the numbers are so different? is because the PlayStation 5 digital was not produced as much as the Series S? Yeah. Or is there other reasons such as, like, Game Pass, like, encouraging digital? Maybe there's better deals on Xbox? Like, there's a lot of things that I'm kind of uh, wondering why would lead to, like, such a huge difference in digital versus media on both of the platforms. I don't know. How you feel about that? Um, are you talking about, like, the... Where, like, like I think X, the of all Xbox games is, like, 19% are physical and like yeah, and PlayStation is way different. Yeah, it's because for Xbox because Xbox is a a company that, I know they both have digital version consoles, right? But Xbox has kind of like fully went full in on like the the digital thing. They they like when you consider play anywhere, when you consider the Xbox Series S and when you consider Game Pass. Um these are I, I i i expect that xbox would be most of its uh purchases would be digital at this point i i i, yeah, I did ex- think, anticipate yeah. that you gotta think too there's an actual cheaper version like a significantly cheaper version mm-hmm. so that could lead to a lot of like the difference in terms of how much these uh consoles are you mm-hmm. know when there's you know not necessarily a, a huge difference in price between the digital and the physical version you know but then you got like a series s that's 300 you can get for like 200 during like really good sales i could see why people would be more drawn to the series s i don't think the series s is an issue yeah i just think that if microsoft wants to continue this and i don't think they are i think they're done with like the different versions but if they want to continue doing this they've got to put their money where their mouth is you know if it comes down to like a big title missing the platform because of time restraints or you know they just simply don't have enough time to put into this then they got to put pull out the money bag and say okay uh what can we do to help and because if you put people at a at a disadvantage it's up to you to clear the gap of that disadvantage yeah when it doesn't go your way and i feel like there's been a lot of situations where when it comes to like the the Capcom fighters, I don't know why Phil and them didn't think that was a game that they should really get behind and make sure it's coming out. Yeah. Like absolutely. that game is on every platform right now but Xbox. Sure, it is coming out, but the fact is is like I'm tired of being the console, we get your shit later. Yeah. Because at yeah. that point, what's the point? Like I'm glad that it's gonna get it. Don't get me wrong. But it's like the Final Fantasy Rebirth remake. We're waiting years for some of these games. Yeah. These games should be coming out for both platforms. And this is 100% on Xbox because they got to do a better job. And not only relationships with these companies. But if you go out and you make something like the Series S, you Mm got to stand behind that and do whatever it takes to make sure that that's not slowing your ecosystem down. Because it would be different if it couldn't run on the PlayStation. But if the Series X can do it, and I ha- and I can't get the game because of the Series S, Microsoft needs to go above and beyond to make sure that that doesn't happen. Yeah, but they're too busy extending their content to new platforms. So, um, uh, which they, they they came out with like a, a, a Microsoft came out with like a note to their investors or whatever, uh, and one of the highlights uh, for their uh, gaming uh, division, they say. Um, he said they say uh, this is from Satya he says uh, as for gaming we continue to innovate to offer players more ways to experience the games they love where when and how they want finally we bought four of our fan favorite titles to Nintendo Switch and Sony PlayStation for the first time as we continue to extend our content to new platforms I know there that there was a rumor 
that said, you know, Xbox has slowed their ports because of fan reaction. It's not true. Microsoft doesn't give a fuck about you, me, us, or its games yeah, or its it, platform. It, they so don't care. <laughs> I haven't. Th- this is one of the things that I didn't come across. I, mm-hmm. I've read it on Twitter, but I didn't like catch up on it. So essentially, they're saying that like they're slowing their row because of the reaction they got from Indiana Jones. Mm-hmm. I could see that happening, but it had nothing to do with the fans. Uh, it, if anything, I could see that they've looked at this entire year mm-hmm. and see how drastically the sales have reduced on everything, and said, okay. Maybe we need to to push the brakes on this a little bit. Like, I could see that, but as far as like people sitting here trying to say that, uh, you know, now they do t- they do take the public outcries into consideration, but a company like Microsoft, unless they see it hurting their bottom line from like the masses, because here's the thing, me and you might say something, mm-hmm. but there's when I make a video talking about this. All the Xbox people in the video saying you're, you're complaining, you're yep. you're attacking Xbox, you do nothing but criticize them. So clearly, just because me and you and some of the other people, the mm-hmm. biggest YouTubers and the biggest people in the industry, they're all for. Oh, it's got to go everywhere now. So mm-hmm. and, you know, I, I don't I don't believe that. Uh, yeah, I, this is this is solely money, in my opinion. Yeah, it, 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 so the situation is like I can't like <laughs> I got to grow up, but. What what is what it's doing? Um, I see that it's it, it is driving hardcore fans away, um, not away from really Xbox, but because all it does is is migrating people. I think people are being almost less tribalistic. There are some people that are remaining tribal and they're just opening up. You know what they did? They think they have to convert to like you know, oh Game Pass, Game Pass, Game Pass. At this point, you know, again, I'm happy. I have a no capable PC, which I plan to upgrade again, so it can be a con, a, a true comforting place to play. Um, but the thing is, it's just like, hey, I mean, I liked, I, I like Xbox. You know what I mean? I'm, conti- I'm still gonna continue to play their uh, games. I hate what they're doing. I don't like it. But what is it? What is doing is that what they're doing is beneficial to a degree to me. Um, very, sl- very slimmer degree, though. Yeah. Here's it, the thing, like, to me, what I care about the hardware because that's what I play on. Yeah. If I wanted to play on yeah. PC, I'd go play on PC. Which you and probably you should. You have a sh- freaking beast. Yeah, and you can't tell me with a straight face mm-hmm. that sending your games on the competitor's platform and giving no reasons to own an Xbox... Mm-hmm. Either it's sending these games to PlayStation or mm-hmm. making these games a day and date on PC. Yeah, you cannot tell me that that's not going to eventually lead to a place to an Xbox being shut down. It, no, it maybe will, not uh, the ecosystem. Uh, yeah, but you can't tell me that doesn't mean that they're going to eventually look at this and say, "Is this does this make sense yeah. for us?" No, no, yeah, yeah. I, I, I do think eventually the, the 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 console platform will cease to exist. I think they'll once they mobilize or um, be be able to get the the uniqueness of their Xbox as an OS onto PC and onto handheld devices on the phones I think that's that's going to be their out they'll still be a mega producer of games or publisher of games um the Xbox will still be relevant as a brand um their controllers will be the the controllers are going to outlast the console um that because is 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 almost a default controller for PC um I think, yeah, it, it it sucks. I do think that's what it uh, lends to because they they they're putting themselves in a position where there's like no need for them to exist in the console space. I and would never themselves in that situation. Yeah, by themselves, all by themselves. I would never buy personally. I would never buy an Xbox first party game on PlayStation. I just won't. I don't care how well it runs. If, if I'm going to do, it, I'm going to do it, do do that on PC. I would never do it because I think I, I just think it's you know stupid. Um, uh, by the time gaming becomes truly, truly, truly platform agnostic, Xbox won't exist as a console anymore. Bet, book it. Um, and that's what Xbox needs to happen. They need games to be platforming that agnostic right now, uh, so that it's, it doesn't seem, but they're, I feel like they're, they're creating them. So I hate that when they come out on the news and, uh, and announce it and continuing their support. 
uh, and they know the fans don't like it at all. Um, but we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, Christopher Dring. There's a couple of things that's showing up on my Xbox over the la- my X app over the last two hours. Uh, from GameIndustry.biz, he says, analysts estimate that Call of Duty Black Ops 6 will attract around 2.5 to 4 million new Game Pass subscribers. We also surveyed IGN readers with 60 to 70% of Call of Duty players saying they'll play the game via Microsoft subscription service. Thoughts on I can that? see that. So call now, here's it- the thing, like, I, I I believe that game this is going to be the biggest growth in Game Pass they've ever had. Even though that they are not allowed to like promote it to a certain degree, mm-hmm. this is still going to be the biggest thing they've ever done when it comes to Game Pass. But considering how much money they spent, what does Microsoft expect to make out of it? You know what I'm saying, like. Because we could see here, oh, you know, they get three or four million. Mm-hmm. That's a W to us. Yeah. But when they spend sixty billion dollars, is that a W to them? Yeah, that's true. I think um, nothing else is going to move Game Pass higher than this day. Yeah, game yeah, this that's year. true. Yeah, this is the only game that can do it. This and a, a Grand Theft Auto, uh, but they Grand Theft, they didn't got Grand Theft Auto, but they got the other option that comes, the uh, the one that comes annually. So. Yeah, man, it's uh, I'm it, it's you know, the the conversation around Call of Duty is uh is interesting, right? Because you know people are going to like say is it is it uh, is it going to fail? Is it going to uh, like what do Xbox need for? Does it, it needs to grow Game Pass? It still needs to be the best seller. Like it's it's a weird situation, man. It's a weird situation. I'm happy to see Microsoft uh do ramp up its marketing um call it while call it's i feel like there's two teams doing the marketing for this game you got xbox and the game pass doing their marketing and you have activision blizzard doing their call of duty marketing um and their the call of duty marketing is platform agnostic they're not they're not even identifying the platform xbox clearly obviously utilizing you no know, game pass utilizing the xbox console they, they're they even talking about 4k 60 again um in their in their marketing spill, which is smart because they're doing this right around the time the PlayStation, uh, you know, Five Pro comes, so it's uh it's going to be monumental. Um, this is the most hype Call of Duty I've I, I, I've seen in a long time, but people are just everybody's watching this. PlayStation's watching this. Microsoft is watching this. Activision, of course, is uh watching this. What does this mean this is was what do you think is going to happen um i think it's going to be extremely successful uh i'm just curious on i'm curious on what their expectations are to be honest with you mm-hmm. like it, it, I, I hope that microsoft has like realistic expectations when it comes to selling stuff absolutely part of me feels like because when they do stuff certain it doesn't make sense it wouldn't surprise me if we like turn around and then, oh, we expected 10 million. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, and it's just like, I hope they don't have those, those, you know, realistic. You know, people put in the comment section. I know you guys hate my ass, so uh, we're, we're gonna put it in there anyway. Uh, put in the comment section what you guys feel like their expectations are, uh, because uh, I think they probably have like not unrealistic expectations, but they're on the higher end of the spectrum. Yeah. Uh, so I'm kind of, you know, I, and should they have those expectations? Yeah, because it's Call of Fucking Duty. Yeah, my but, thing is with these expectations, right? Are those expectations like, hey, you know, we expect to grow Game Pass, but here's where we expect loss of sales. Because the thing is, it's one thing to expect Game Pass growth, but it's also uh, one thing to expect it to sell on, this is how it should sell on each platform. Because the thing is, is that people don't realize is, uh, this year's Call of Duty versus last year's Call of Duty, uh, it's still they still sell it to the same pool of people. It's just that they have another way to get the game. So unless they're planning on finding brand new customers like that hasn't purchased the game before, that hasn't played and also didn't have played Game Pass before, 
it, it's going to have like a seesaw effect, in my opinion. And yeah, we'll just have to see it. Yo, here's the thing. When it comes to Call of Duty, I do think that they can get what they want, but it's not going to be one year of Call of Duty. You know, especially if they can't market it like the way they should. It's going to take multiple years of having Call of Duty on Game Pass to really, you know, tell people Game Pass is in Call of Duty. You know, or Call of Duty is in Game Pass. Because, uh, you know, to this, to this day, I still see some people not knowing. And it's not their fault. It's because... You know, Xbox has done a decent job at saying it, but they ain't really done a good job at the same time. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, gotta be, that's got to be everywhere. And I don't know if it's like, you know, some form of like written agreement between them and the FTC. I don't know. Uh, but I, one thing I will say is it's like, this is it. Because I, I, what do you think happens if they don't hit their quotas? Do you think they shut down Game Pass? <laughs> I don't think they shut down Game Pass. Um, it's you're like what if they don't hit their where, where do you go from this so the thing is is call of duty is such my I, I, like they're going to get whatever they need right you know what i mean well, you, I, and i feel you on that but okay is it just cells that they're looking at i'm sure cells is a uh, part of that or are they wanting like a variety of stuff if the cells outweigh the game pass the Will they be happy with that, or do they like? Because you know how these quotas thing. Like, I am. I'm a little like. I'm a little worried on like what their expectations. Are. I hope it's realistic, but then we've seen these stupid ass companies where it's just like, how much more do you need? Like, these some of these companies have more money than countries. <laughs> yeah, and they're continuously wanting. We need 10% more next quarter, 20% more next quarter. How much could you realistically, in the long-term stretch of things, mm -hmm. continue to squeeze out of the consumers before you hit a cap yeah. that you can't go any higher? I don't think any... You, I, can, have, you can have your hands in every industry. Mm -hmm. There's, oh, there's going to get to a point one day, maybe it's not five, ten years from now, yeah. where you squeezed every... Cause how, how does most companies, they expand? Okay, mm -hmm. we've squeezed everything out of the gaming industry that we can. Let's move on to the to, to the platforming industry. Let's move on to the yeah. to the cooking industry. Let's, yeah. let's get in more kitchens so we can squeeze and make more food. But what happens when you're in everything? And then let's be honest here. Microsoft doesn't have the best track record going every other place. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. That uh, that's um, that's a good point. It's just that, like you know, at some point there is a cap. Um, there's a there's not you 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 run out of almost run out of customers, right? Um, and and that's what's wrong with the industry in general. Like everybody's looking for extreme growth. Um. And and there's no way to get it from. There's no way to capture it from. Um, but we'll see. I think I I personally think that whatever it is that happens, I feel like it's going to be a good um, a good turnout. I do think there will be a decline somewhere in order for there be to be a growth in Game Pass, and I think. I think obviously this is gonna sell best. It's gonna be the Xbox sales. Yeah, yeah. But definitely. the thing is, is how much were they realistically selling in that anyway? And another thing I'll be very disappointed with is if they don't, if they're like, oh, you know, mm -hmm. we did good in Game Pass, but we took a thirty percent reduction in, in, you know, sales of Call of Duty on Game Pass. I'm gonna reach my hand and just smack the whole company as a whole. Mm -hmm. It's like okay, because because to me it kind of feels like they. They're inconsistent what they want. They say one thing, but you know we'll, we'll get uh, meetings leaked where they're complaining about the sales of the Xbox, and it's like, but you've literally done nothing but tell people not to buy Xboxes. So why are you complaining? Yeah, yeah. absolutely true. You know you gotta you gotta um what the heck um you have to. 
it, again, it's like you think they have the metrics for this type of stuff, right? Um, the they do. Av- but the average- problem is that they they have people looking in the industries that know mm-hmm. nothing about the industries. Yeah. Considering the advertisements, the um, yeah, when you consider the advertisements, uh, all the stuff that they're doing, which you know is pulling away from the console, it's like my thing is, it's like when they we're reporting on like the sales of like you know when hardware is down like fifty seven percent or thirty percent or whatever, you know, what is their mindset? You know what I mean? It's like, do they know? Do they are they projecting for this to happen based off the decisions that they're making? No, I think they they. I'm gonna. I'm. I think it's all corporate greed, man. I really do. I think that uh, they want they want everyone's cookies. They want to eat their own. They want mm-hmm. the, uh, the 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 breakfast spot down the road. They want all their food. It, it's just like, dude, like you can't have everything. You can't make a subscription service and complain when people don't buy certain games. Yeah. You, it, like, it just it makes zero sense. You can't expand to every part of the industry and then complain when people stop buying your hardware. <laughs> like, th- that's why it's just like, at this point, man, you know how I am. I was just like, it is what it is. I'll make content. Uh, you know, people don't like when I make uh, content uh, criticizing Xbox, which I felt like today wasn't really criticism of yeah. Xbox. Yeah. It was just pretty much saying, yo, you know, what I see with what I'm sure we're going to get to with the Helldivers thing, which I guess we can go into that if you want to. It's like, I see something like the Helldivers thing, and the first thing I think of is PlayStation still got no problem taking you behind the shed and beating the shit out of you. <laughs> so yeah. why are you giving them the only tools you have to to fight back yeah so the crazy thing is about so the hell the, the, there's this hell divers thing where you know people are asking them can hell divers come to you know uh xbox or whatnot and they said they, i think one of the pr dudes said, said blame playstation they dead i said that yeah man. yeah it's like they they feel spencer and somebody they need to like to duke it out uh but it could it could definitely happen but it's not on you know them to do it obviously playstation has to uh has to uh, allow them to do that. Um, the thing is, is that I know I see I saw a couple people. Um, I know Jazz posted something like you know he shared his sentiments that you know how divers will blow up. I don't see like, and this is where I wish the uh, the industry was a little bit like you know more friendlier. Um, you know Xbox being who they are. Uh, Porting their own titles, their own exclusives to PlayStation for no apparent reason. I feel like Hell Divers on the Xbox it should be would be a good idea. I think um, Concord on Xbox would have been a good idea. I think uh, uh, a lot of these multiplayer centric, like the games that PlayStation don't truly trust fully, and you're at a point with Hell Divers. It's like it makes a hundred percent. It makes perfect sense why yeah. these games would be on every platform. But it's like what we said that we want Xbox to have a little bit. Like, have faith in your brand. Yeah. Like PlayStation's like PlayStation would rather damn near go bankrupt trying yeah. to put out Concord than give that shit to Xbox. Yeah. PlayStation also would like the, the thing is it's like. No first party, you know. Um, they're not gonna clearly put any of their games on there if they won't even allow Square Enix to put their own games on Xbox. You know what I mean? Um, it's um, it, it 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 it's strange. I mean, I'd like to see them do things like that uh, with certain games. My dashboard keep popping up with certain games on um, Xbox from PlayStation. Uh, and I'm not asking for like you know their major first party IEPs and stuff like that, but Hell Divers I think would have been a good try, especially when it, when some of these games go on like a decline, they could use that like that boost. Um, it's only only right, but I don't know how Microsoft sees the industry. Um, hopefully, important games on PlayStation is making them money. Um, 
because they feel the need that uh, to do it hopefully is is worthwhile but I, I I don't understand if I was in a you know in a console business you every game that sells on your console outside of your game you, you're still making money on every third party game that is sold on your platform you would think you have a vet uh, a huge investment into that to continue to sell games on your platform and to want games to be sold on your platform opposed to the uh, competitor and I, I, I think uh, it's a lost art it's a lost business art that uh, they're not you know, taking it's, advantage it's of lost, anymore it's not a lost business art it's just Xbox ain't doing it yeah yeah um, it, 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 what's funny is they make a lot of money off of that uh, that PlayStation you know selling yeah. stuff on the PlayStation platform but the problem is is I'm sure they've had so much of a downhill when it comes to what games are actually selling and what games aren't selling. And I'm sure, you know, because here's the thing. I don't 100% agree that everyone that used to buy games just don't buy games anymore. I don't agree with that. I think for the most part, people that bought games back in the day, they're still mm -hmm. buying games now. Yeah. I think you just got a lot of the middle ground people, the people that probably weren't going to buy it, a lot of the risk takers that would buy something just to buy it. Then people ain't buying games anymore. They're waiting for the Game Pass back. They're waiting for the Game Pass game. But for instance, Metaphor. Yep. I love that game. Smooth, do you think I would have bought that if it was Game Pass or not Game Pass? Uh, I think you would have bought it. That's cool. what I'm saying. Like, people that actually enjoy that game, they're not waiting. They're, yeah. And that's why, like, I'm mainly just like, look, but I'm not going to sit here and be one of those people that say it doesn't affect, uh, you know, game pass subscribers at all because it definitely does but uh you know in in probably certain cases because i think it hits indies more than anything because let's be real here I, even myself i've looked at an indie game that i was like kind of interested in and so yeah. that looks like a game that would come to game pass later yeah like i'm sure it's devastated theirs but it's just like you know most of the time if people wanted to play that game they would have bought that game it does not matter if that was in a subscription service or not yeah yeah um it's it, uh yeah some games are just you know going to sell regardless right um regardless of its uh subscription status uh i think metaphor um i don't know damn did metaphor come out in october or september like metaphor came out this month october right? all right so that we would see it on the charts next month okay um because there's a, oh my god never mind um there's a i fr freaking lost my train of thought man well, i think it only so like seven percent on xbox uh, but that's like in europe i'm pretty sure I, i'm pretty sure uh, a small it's a smaller percentage on xbox regardless but i think that's like but the europe numbers more people yeah. Playing it. yeah more people have the other platforms yeah I never understood when people was like, oh, PlayStation outsold Xbox. I'd be very concerned if PlayStation didn't outsell Xbox. If if any game is outsold on Xbox, I am like, you guys really wasn't fucking with that game. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's true. So it, it, it should always be a, a, a given that that occurs because uh, just simple math. Just simple math should allow uh playstation should be the best seller for most games you um, got more customers yeah they got more customers so significantly amount more customers especially when you add that playstation 4 user base because a lot of people make them for both so. yeah yeah that's you know there's games actually that stop coming out for xbox one but they are coming still coming to ps4 it's like ps4 ps5 and xbox series so it's a it's a interesting interesting time man um i'm trying to think where like are what else is going on i know there was i don't know if we podcasted uh during the xbox partner program uh that uh i don't think we did but like i don't really feel like we got to talk about no that not in like, not detail can't... i mean I, I, there's just one game that i thought was like kind of popping the, the game that uh, the game that we 
that I was saying I can't talk about. It was at that showcase. Okay. Yeah. Not Wo Wo Chong. Nah, Wo Chong is twenty twenty five. Am I saying that right though? How you pronounce it? It's another Souls game. Yeah, I can't pronounce half the shit I be saying. Wu Chong. It's another like. You better stop before you get canceled by two. No, it's just sights though. I didn't use the sound effect. You did that. Wo um, Wo Chong or some shit like that. I think it, but it looks it looks cool. Um. I'm happy that they did these showcases. That you know what's crazy is that that's all PlayStation like uh, uh, state of play is. Um, it's just that they sprinkle in a little bit of uh, you know big games in there. Um, but the partner showcase, you know, I think I thought it was uh, I thought it was dope. I'm happy to, to to see them. The next time we see anything significant from Xbox is typically now with the Game Awards, and after that it's the you know the January showcase. My thing is with the where xbox stands today you know with the porting and you know where they stand and compared to playstation and nintendo excuse me is there relevant hype is there still is it is there reason to be hyped for their when they do their showcases like when they do the january showcase when they do the summer game showcases when you consider yeah, i think there's still still reasons to you know enjoy it's just like here what i i just i'm excited just from announcements in general these days, you know, I actually enjoy that. I can enjoy covering that more than anything. Just talking about mm -hmm. games that I really want, looking forward to, games that look good. Uh, but you know, at, the, at these days, dude, people, you know, people want to get mad at you for covering anything. Yeah, yeah. It, it, it again is always going to be a sensitive uh, topic. Um, because in and it's a topic that pisses people off um and some people again some people adapted some have not um are you gonna be jumping into call of duty yes tomorrow i will be streaming it awesome awesome so I'll, i will also be streaming uh this weekend trying to pre-install that bad boy uh tonight um so quite a so quite a few games that i, I I want to play. Um, have you been following the stalker uh, previews? Yes. Um, I've actually seen a lot of gameplay on it, like behind the scenes gameplay. Uh, I think uh, I think a lot of people are gonna be excited about that game. Like, mm -hmm. well, it, it looks good. Like, I, I don't think I'll be playing that game a whole lot. I'm not really a big fan of games that like function the way that game appears yeah. to function. Yeah. I, you know, uh, I feel like that people aren't understanding what kind of game that is, and I think they they deliberately show you that anyway. Yeah, like this game is not an easy looking game to play, and I think that they're not going to really show you the hard parts of the game. You know? Yeah, and that's the thing is like I I. I I struggle with games like that. I struggle with Metro. It's like, like I was like, give me gamified, man. Or if it, if the game if the game is good, then um, I'm going to need like a normal or you know no easy mode. But then again, who knows? You know, I'll give it a try. It's on Game Pass. Dude, let me check to see if the meta is good. What's the gameplay loop? Is it is it something that I can tolerate? Is it? Uh, it seems like it had like a lot of uh, you know a lot of RPG mechanics that people keep. I guess we're hoping like Starfield would have. I'm not sure why they keep uh like why they're comparing it. But um I think uh you know, I think it's probably going to review well based on but then again, yeah, no, I think it, I think it'll probably uh review well. And that'll be a good thing uh for Xbox and whatnot. And uh man, I just I just hope they uh you know, don't fumble the bag. You know, I just get frustrated with Xbox because they wait, wait until the end of the year to like have some consistency. But you know, they're going out with a bang. Um, you know, you know, they had the um, the marketing for um, uh, obviously Metaphor, uh, Call of Duty. Obviously, is theirs. Um, um, Stalker Two is an exclusive uh, for a time being. Indiana Jones is a, a timed exclusive, even though it's a first party. Um, title and um, you know Hellblade again it, it came it went 
you know, we wish, you know, there was more to that. You know, Starfield had the, its expansion. Um, you know, we know how that went. Uh, Flight Sim is still due in November. Um, so it's a lot going on. It's just that Xbox got to get, you know, better with their cadence. It, it, it would have been nice for I Xbox. Want them to be more transparent with what's going on with their company. True. Like they're just, they're being very hush hush. So, like, need to know. But it's like, by the time, by the time people find out, yeah, they're already so they're already pissed. Yeah, they're you yeah. Just, in some ways, they lie to you, which they don't necessarily lie to you. Yeah, they just don't tell you all the info you might need to know. Yeah, absolutely. I think there's um. I wish they would have, you know, actually did the things they needed to improve before they started doing these drastic decisions. I wish they would have got their game cadence right. I wish they would have got their bangers out right first before they made this move. And I feel like they, they're doing all this at the wrong time. So by the time we get to enjoy shit, they, they, they throw it away. But um, any oh, I, I, yo, as I was just about to ask you a question, I'm coming across an Xbox Call of Duty ad that advertises the console at the end of the trailer. Shout out to Xbox. Ooh. My goodness. Let we're, me let me re- you realize we're praising them for the bare minimum, right? <laughs> <laughs> let me retweet that. Um, so, any uh, is there anything I'm missing before uh, we get out of here for tonight? I'm trying to check on that uh, download. I want to make sure I'm all set for uh, uh, tonight think, with that I Call of Duty. I think we're, you know, clear. It's like, look, man, we just we just want them to be honest with stuff. Like, look, if if you're going to Mm-hmm. Do something different than it, it is what it is at this point, but it's like, but don't, don't not tell like, don't sit here and play gotcha moments like Phil Spencer saying, oh, Indiana Jones isn't one of those four games, knowing damn well mm-hmm. yeah. that it's the fifth game. Yeah, you should have <laughs> just kept your damn mouth sh- shut, like in general. That's funny. I'm not gonna lie. He said, no damn well it's the fifth game. <laughs> like, and what's funny is they didn't have to. Because so many people were talking about Indiana Jones, they didn't have to do that. They could have yeah. just kept that shut. But yeah. instead of just being honest, it's like the PR people was like, you know, Phil, you know, we can word this in a way that gives you plausible deniability. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and I hate when they do that. So that once that once that happened, I was like, you know, these these games are doomed. Lying. Yeah. They're doomed. The games are doomed. But there's some great games coming. It's just that, you know, everybody gets to enjoy them. That's why a wise person would get off this. Ah, this is going to sound horrible coming from me. Horrible. Because I'm not the person that should be saying it. Game to game. Game to just game. You know, like I said, if you're on PC, you're good. You're You're, you're fine. You know what I mean? None of this stuff actually really matters. If you're on Xbox, it also really doesn't matter. It just matters in the in it the matters sense. on the, the the health of the, the yeah. console. If, if the console's not making money in three or four years, yeah, and they're not investing into the console, that definitely affects you. Yeah, but don't go out there announcing. <laughs> Uh, where you need, where you're gonna be playing your games, as if people really care. Um, you know, there's a lot of people online announcing like, "I'm gonna be playing on uh, PC and the PlayStation Five Pro." Okay. Oh, I see what you're doing there. Okay. Thank you. We care because yeah, you have to <laughs> announce that you're doing something like. Uh, shot. Uh, I mean, no hate, no hate. I mean, I just think it's like ri- ridiculous. And then you want to know why people are, you know, coming at you in the comments and you're getting daily arguments is because you, it's, it's unnecessary. Like, it's, uh, dude, dare gamers. I play video games. <laughs> shout out to D Batch. All right. Feel like, I feel like so many people, and it's not just D Batch. It's like people yeah. in general are just so obsessed with being considered a neutral gamer. Yeah. Like, it's yeah, like, dude, man, I have bias, but smooth. We argue more about Xbox stuff than the actual like Xbox people do. So it's just like you clearly see that like I actually have a bias, but you know I, I'm very vocal about the stuff I don't like. Yeah, does it? But the thing is, like, I get annoyed is when people try, and this isn't necessarily this part isn't about D Patch, but it's like don't act like you know the future. 
Don't act like you have some crystal ass ball that you can look into and know exactly what this sign is going to lead to. Everyone in this industry said this is a bad move for Microsoft. <laughs> it feels like Microsoft dropped a bunch of checks off to Xbox people. And then like a week later, oh, this is just a few. This is where the industry's going. Who? Who's going this way? <laughs> yeah, Xbox yeah. Is doing it. Yeah. Yeah, no. <laughs> No, that, that's the that's the annoying thing. It's like when they take a they take a stance that's very unpopular, and then they give like a reason, a universal reason, and they make it seem like it's a industry thing. And it's like, bro, but you're the only ones doing it. Uh, uh, have you been following? Before we get out of here, I do want to talk about. So you know, Phil Spencer's on his tour. You know, he says he's playing Everwild uh, with Rare. Uh, when do you think we see Everwild again? Next year. You th- next year. Yep. Yeah. Summer game test or uh, summer uh, Xbox game showcase or like uh, January? Video game awards. Oh, so next December. Yep. Ew. All right. Well. <laughs> Did you just say ill? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's too long, man. Um. All right. I mean, let's be before this podcast was you thinking about Everwild? I was not. That's what I'm saying. Like they, they've wasted too much time. Ain't nobody caring about that game. I'm not gonna say that's not gonna change once people actually get their hands on the game. Yeah. But it's just like at this point, uh, don't bring that game out unless you're ready to show gameplay. Yeah, true. Because we we've seen actually that game way too much in a short period of time. But all about like eight years ago, it feels like, uh, well, maybe five years ago. Um, and I I don't know why they did that. I, if the game was nowhere they, near to be that ready was at a time where they didn't ha- like now they have so many games that they could show it doesn't really matter when they show stuff mm-hmm. uh, but back then the, you gotta think that's before they bought the studios mm-hmm. like they 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 would show stuff because it's like are they gonna what's worse like showing something that's years and years away or having a 30 minute presentation with like the same shit you've already seen say see you next year like yeah yeah that's true that that's true that's true all right well thank you guys for tuning in to another episode of planet xbox podcast shout out to attic uh uh for coming you know what i think we should do what's that we should talk to smooth uh bg and black bond and them and have like a planet xbox and weapon will like combined show of mm-hmm. like the video game awards like talking about have our own awards ceremony and stuff because we yeah, that may talk work. shit about Jeff Keighley's uh, uh, reward thing, but nobody ever do shit. <laughs> Maybe I'll talk to Wubba Wubba. Maybe, I mean, uh, IOP. Maybe IOP can get in on it. Have mm-hmm. like a, like, uh, our gaming community game awards. Oh, yeah. I, I forgot. That used to be more popular back, th- uh, back then. But you got, I mean, I haven't, I, I just recall there being a lot of shows doing it like some years back. I feel like a lot of people dropped off on it after a while. Yeah, but, let's see, see what we can do. Yeah. So I said we can't keep complaining about these people doing this stuff and yeah. literally doing nothing to change it. Absolutely. We just gonna bitch every year. We bit, we'll bitch this year all year about Jeff Keighley and still live react to his punk ass fucking video game awards anyway. Like. <laughs> we're part of the problem like we are we're part yeah. of the problem a little bit a little bit uh by the way i've up uh, i got the vault edition upgrade uh for call of duty so jessica it was only 30 bucks and uh yeah we're gonna get into it but uh you, you're gonna hate me i what? think I, ha- I have one of those in my uh my xbox stop it <laughs> i have one of those in my uh email oh damn okay well, let's get to it. Thank you guys for watching Play Xbox Podcast. We will see you guys next week. Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. Make sure you subscribe to the Patreon. Subscribe to my channel. I've been very productive this week. Got some videos coming. And uh, we'll be streaming soon as well, especially when this Call of Duty comes out. All right, Attic, you got anything to say? Otherwise, we are out of here. Wear your seatbelts. <laughs> yes. Do that and don't text and drive. No, you can text and drive just wear your seatbelts. That way, if something happens, you seatbelts on at least. Wow. Be safe, everyone.